What's going on? This is a package review. I haven't done one of these in a little bit, but that's because if I wanted to do it super comprehensively, um, it actually does require a little bit of setup and research. But in this case, I was able to shoot a couple videos today, but this one is gonna be an easy package to just bang out for this because it's one of those like one function packages. I mean, technically three, but it's basically one function package that is infinitely useful that I use on the daily. So I'm just gonna create a new project. This will work for a package, a project, anything with an .rproj file um, like that, or even, even not, but we'll get into that. So I'm just gonna create a new project. And let's create a directory, new folder R, and then new folder data. And then let's create a new R markdown document. Cool. Let's delete all the typical stuff, save it to our root. And then let's create an R script and save that to our R folder. And then in our data, let's create another R script and just call it. Um, <laughs> data. Uh, let's, go, let's go grab some tabular data. HTML tabular data set. Actually, I think we don't, we don't even need that. Actually, we could just do um, diamonds. No. How do we access the default? Okay, maybe I do need tabular data. So let's just grab some tabular data from somewhere if I can figure out where to get it from. Uh, Control C. Or can I copy? View page source. I just want some data. Give me some data. Not working. But with the data pasta package, which I'm going to cover probably in another video. Um, you can copy HTML tables from, you know, a website. Like you could do this, or you could just um, copy data from an Excel file. Just copy the cells and do what I'm about to do here. So I'm just going to add ins data pasta paste as a triple, and I have a triple of all that text character that was in an HTML table. I'm just calling it data and assign it. Okay, so our data script is done. So we want to call, um, what do we want to do? We want to uh, count how many rows or just um, import the data. Well, actually let's do a filter. So what package we're gonna be covering today is the here package. Here as a package is probably one of the most widely used, um, I mean, I'm guessing here, probably one of the most widely used packages for package development, uh, for anal portable analysis. It's one of the best things ever because it allows you to do very easy syntax for relative directory or relative file path management. And if everything is encapsulated in an R project or package, using relative file paths is the way to go because if you have a hard-coded path to your desktop or some directory on your computer and you send your analysis to somebody else for reproducibility, they will come and set your, fire, your house on fire because your file path doesn't work. So we are gonna use the here package. So what does the here package do? If you have a directory with a prod, our proj file, a project, and it's your project directory, that is the root directory of your project. The here package just says, here is a file path to your root directory where your file of your um, our proj file is, your project file. So I can do here, here. What does it do? What output does it give me? Look, you can see my console right there. Home, my current directory, our test. Um, it actually should not be doing that in that directory. Not sure why. Actually, this is the first time I've never seen it work correctly. Um, Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
our test. Oh no, that's right. Yeah, okay. Um, it's doing my first name, last name. Maybe it's just because I'm on Linux and instead of like uh, Microsoft, I'm used to looking at it in Microsoft or Windows. But um, so this is just saying that like my home directory is this project because if I go to my, this is my test file or actually this whole file is, uh, um, oh, wow, well, I got it all backwards. This is the actual directory to this whole project. Home R test, home R test. So basically the, the tilde, you know, home R test. So this is the, is the root directory. So I am at this level, but I'm trying to access um, from this script, I'm trying to access the data in the data script. So what do I need to do? If I'm in my current home directory, the next step is I need to go into the data directory. So in double quotes in the here package, I can do data. So what does that do? We can look at the console, clear it first, and uh, run this. If I can run a piece of code. So now, I, ooh, I've added data to the uh, file path by just say adding it in double quotes. But because R is a vectorized language, I can separate it with commas with another argument, and this file is called data.r. So what does that do? Well, that gives me the file path to the actual data file. So what do I want to do? With this R file, I want to source that document, which basically means give me that data file. I mean, typically I would not have you know, a triple like this in a separate R file in a data directory, it would probably have like a CSV and then, or some way of getting a SQL connection, or I would just put all of that in R in general. If you've seen my package workflow video, I go into that in a little bit more detail. This is just some quick and dirty example, but if I had like a CSV in here or a bunch of CSVs, I could have a script for each CSV, do all my analysis and change and stuff, and then shove that into R markdown. But in this case, like imagine I'm sourcing a CSV or I'm getting a CSV imported into R here. I could do like F read from data table or just read CSV from whatever. But in this case, I'm just gonna source it and that sourcing, I'm sourcing the relative file path to that data. So that gives me my data. Um, so I can do, so because I've sourced this and I now have, because this actually assigns to the data variable, I can then say um, data, you know, I could then uh, pipe that into, um, you know, dplyr filter, and I could say uh, where country is equal to uh, Germany. And then I can pipe that into view. Ah, so there's the record that returns that. So what does all this do? This is uh, getting my, my data. This one is taking that data and filtering it to only where the country is Germany. And then I, at this point I'm looking at it, but I don't want to look at it. What I wanna do is I wanna assign it to output. All right, so basically I'm daisy chaining um, R script sourcing, but I mean, if this was a CSV, then you have your data, you're importing it into an R script that does all your transformations, analysis, and changing, and whatever, produce all your variables, and then once this document, this script R, is uh, sourced, then you just get your output, which is the output. And if I ran this right here, output is just that output we wanted, that single record with Germany. But that's not how we're doing things. We're gonna save that. In your R markdown, this is where you write your analysis. So now, I actually want to say, you know, um, uh, data source, and then I could do here, here, inside. This is the root, so I just need to go R, and then script.r. What does that do? If I had a completely new R environment, of course it aborts while I'm shooting a video. Great, let me just go back there. I've never had that happen before. Um, so if I try to source this, this document, I've restarted R, I have no variables, no nothing. I'm gonna source the script. The script sources the data, data has data. And the script also 
um, filters that, da that data. So and I only would get output. So let me see. I am just going to do a relative reference to that file, source it, and I get data and output because I did a source in, in here as well. So that adds it to my R environment. But I mean, typically I would, in this case, if I was sourcing a CSV, I would just have my final output, which is what I care about. So then when I, because I have my final output now, I can actually do like my visualizations and just my write-up in R Markdown, because this is just where I'm documenting my report, my analysis in R Markdown, and all of the um, data munging and you know filtering and selecting mutate whatever all that is occurring in the scripts and I like to have a single file for each data set or each table and a script for each data set or each table or each data source so it's all encapsulated and itemized and that way if anything breaks you know exactly where to pinpoint that issue and to focus your attention and also with larger and larger and larger projects it makes everything a bit more sane so there are, that is basically the here package. That is what it does. Relative references in your directories. That's it. There are a couple other accessory functions with here that are really useful. Namely, um, dr here. I, I've, never, I've only used one of these functions once. I typically just use here because I'm always in a package or project. But uh, you can read the documentation like the dr here um, will give you like a directory reason or a default reason or some, something. I don't really think I've even used that. But one thing I have used is set here. So in Linux, we have dot files. Dot files are typically hidden because they have it start with a dot. Um, if you want to basically hard code your, um, your root directory to some, some directory somewhere, you can uh, use set here and then give it a file path and it will actually create a dot here file that will treat that that uh, wherever it's located as your root directory this way excuse me this way you can change your directory to whatever it is and you don't have to be limited to um, a project or a package you can just have some r markdown files and have that in a folder and use set here and then follow this workflow or just have everything in some R Markdown documents and completely negate the need for project and packages. But I mean, that's not really advised, but it's an option and it's a way of getting around some issues if you um, come across them. But the here package, invaluable, use it every day and highly recommend it. So check out here package. Bye.